topic number one here, that would be the Big 12 released their schedule today, which is kind of crazy to even think about. The fact that they are releasing a schedule after all of the mess from the last few days, the Big 10, Pac-12 cancel, and then we're trying to figure out whether or not the Big 12 last night was going to decide to play or not. Not only did they decide to play, they went ahead and released the schedule, told everybody what their plans are, they're going forward. Here are some of the comments from Big 12 Commissioner Bob Bowlesby from earlier today. They had a press conference, they released the schedule, they did all this. They are allowing the teams to schedule a non-conference game before their conference schedule starts on September 26th, just like everybody else. So the first one was Kansas State adding a September 12th home game with Arkansas State. And now Iowa State has scheduled Louisiana. Now, that would be a very interesting game to me. Uh, Billy Napier against Matt Campbell, that that could be a lot of fun. But either way, uh, he said, what we found out was golden 60 days ago is basically garbage today. He said, uh, on the season getting started, he said, I feel good about it. It's hard to handicap these things. Anyone who says they can tell you what's going to happen with the virus is delusional. Uh, He said that Nebraska has not reached out to the Big 12. He said that they do have a college football playoff call next week to discuss things. Said uh, it'll be a while into the season before all of it is resolved, but there's no obvious reason why they could not have a playoff this season. Uh, He said if other leagues opt to play in the spring, anytime anyone at any level has decided they're not going to play, that affects us. I don't know if we would want to be the only conference playing in the fall. Uh, And then he said on proceeding with the season. Now this is the big one. He said, our medical professionals have told us, move forward, go slowly, make adjustments as needed. If we get to a point where our doctors say you have two wheels off the track and you're headed for a wreck, we will pivot that day. So, you know, I mean, we're we're going to see what happens here. Um, <laughs> Matt Miller said, okay, now you guys can, uh, can bleep on Kevin Warren after he threatened Nebraska. Uh, we'll, we'll get into that. We'll get into that. No worries. No worries. But first, we're going to talk about the Big 12, the uh, the schedule. Oh, by the way, as we are talking here, Texas is hosting UTEP on September 12th, and that's going to be its only non-conference game. So, so we'll see what happens with that, of course. Um, going through some notes for the Big 12 schedule. Chris, have you actually seen the schedule? Nope. Hadn't looked at it one second. Yeah. Won't I, either. Don't care. I, I, don't think you, I don't think you really should. Um, the biggest game, of course, October 10th is still going to be the day for Texas and Oklahoma. They are planning on getting that in, and they're still planning on playing it at the Cotton Bowl. Um, I'm, you know, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. It's it's kind of odd to uh, to be doing a neutral site game where there's going to be no fans, but, hey, to each their own. Um, you know, We'll, we'll see. Each team has two bye weeks. The conference title game can be high, uh, held either December 12th or December 19th. That means there are three weeks of wiggle room to still play all or a vast majority of their games if the season starts um, later than they anticipate. So, you know, I mean, we, we can talk about matchups. We can talk about games all day long. We're not going to right now. But, um, but yeah, I mean, we, we got some fun ones to, to open up with. You know, September 26th looks like it's going to be a full slate of games between the SEC, ACC, and the Big 12, if we get to that point. uh, There was a pretty telling article from Pat Forty earlier, and I don't have it pulled up, but there was a a quote from Tom Mars, who is an attorney uh, who handled, you know, some of the... he, He was Houston Nuts' attorney when he was suing Ole Miss. And along with that, I mean, a ton of other... NCAA. He's handled a bunch yeah. of the waiver Yeah, uh, a bunch of the transfer situations. Stuff. Yeah. For transfers. So, and, and then, uh, all of a sudden, once he was doing that, then all of a sudden he got hired by the NCAA. So, like, yeah. he uh, he has been all around this side of things. And he basically came out and said, there are plaintiff lawyers that are hoping that the SEC, the Big 12, and the ACC go forward and, and play this season. Because if anything goes wrong, they are going to sue the pants off of the universities and the conferences. I mean, they are going to take them down, and it is not going to be pretty. So, with that being said, what what are the odds here? I mean, what, you know. So, once once I started thinking about the legal situations, and I I heard Pat Forty talk about that on their podcast, saw it in his, his thing, and, and, and we kind of touched base with Tom. Uh, he's right. 
they're going to be lined up around the corner yeah. because there, if there are two things that ruin everything in this country that probably start it with good intentions, it's politics and it's attorneys, it's lawyers. Yeah. And that's it. We, we over politicize everything and we over litigate everything. And some kid that's, you know, not a, a five-star athlete who's never had a, a brown bag of cash dropped off to him is going to get sick and they might have some symptoms and they might have some issues. And, and when they do some attorney, some ambulance chasing attorney is going to find them and they're going to say, we can get you 20, $30 million. Yeah. Look at what these schools are worth. Look at how big those endowments are. They put your life at risk for over, money. over a game for money. Yeah. Or not, not a game but, for money. Yeah, but for money. No, you're right. And so, and so, therefore, therefore, we think you're owed a large portion of that. And how many of those cases do you need to bring down a school or a uh, a conference? Well, the the because they're going to go after the schools and the conference. Yes. Yeah. By the way, uh, Matt Miller jumps in here. He said, "Good luck with that. You have to have proof that they contracted it." Uh, I don't know that you're going to have to have proof in the in the civil court. This is not criminal charges, brother. Yeah, it is. You got to convince juries that it's more probable than not. Forty nine point whatever. It's fifty fifty point one percent that they more than likely did this. Yeah, that's the burden of proof civil court is not criminal court well let me let me read you what i got from a uh, from a lawyer today uh he said i think what schools say publicly about the safety of their campuses and sports programs would have a lot to do with the potential risk of liability they will be facing as for your question about bringing students back because i i said what is the difference here because uh, 13 of the 14 big 10 schools are going to have students on campus sure. he said as for that question the only difference I see, and it's the most obvious one, is that the students who are not playing football will not be in contact with other students to the degree that football players would be, which is about as close contact with someone else's breath, sweat, and spit as anyone could imagine. So, now he, he also, I will mention this, he said, uh, considering the daily and nightly life of your average dorm room college student, it seems to me that bringing students back to campuses is like opening new mass incubators for the virus, but it's not the same as football. So, right. and you know, that's, that's the thing you, you can provide a, a safer place on campuses. Um, you can provide a, a, a safer spot on campus in your classrooms for the things that you can control. You can't tell a kid not to go out and, and sleep with somebody or you can't go to bars go to or dinner else. with them or but, hang out or yeah, whatever. No, but you can't, it, and, and, Levi Hamilton jumps in and said, LOL, college students won't be in contact with each other. Ha ha. We all look at this the same way, but the colleges are not in control of that. What they That's are right. in control of is whether or not you actually get to play a sport that you are going to literally be mashing on each other, right? That is where all of this stuff, all this talk about litigation and whatnot comes in. Now, we obviously want the college football season. I am I am curious whether or not the SEC, the ACC, and the Big 12 believes that they have enough to say, okay, like we are going to be safe from any kind of legal ramifications here without any kind of waiver, without anything like that, uh, if, if the option to opt out is enough for these players. Like, I, I mean, who knows? Um, Matt Miller said, okay, then a, a, a normal kid, can a normal kid sue if they get it in the library? They can try. I, I doubt but, it because that normal kid wasn't made to go to the library. Well, and, and not only, well, and now he could say uh, in class, right? And and that's what they'll try and do with the with the football player, right? He wasn't made to play football. That's right. But again, this all the, the, comes here's, down to here's the difference is is our, we're trying to litigate this thing here. Okay, yeah. the problem is is you have to put yourself in a panel of jurors that are not college football fans. They're going to be rando people. Yes. All right, from God knows where, okay, and and they are going to see big greedy corporation that does not pay their pay their labor, forcing them to play kids in and the middle these of a pandemic. Kids get sick. Yeah, that's that's what they're going to say. They're not going to see, you know, math student 
in the library studying. They don't care about that. That's that's not going to win anybody over because nobody's profiting greatly off of that math student or that science student in the library toiling over their studies. No, no, no great abounds of money is being made off of the back of that. There are large sums of money being made off the back of these college kids. Now, I do have to wonder, you know, had they gotten the um, the NIL stuff done years ago? Had they allowed them allowed the players to unionize years ago, would yep. that have made any difference uh, right a now? And I think percent, it would. Yes, yes, they would be playing. All of them would be playing right now across the board. All Power Five would be playing right now if they had name, image, and likeness, and had allowed them to unionize back when Northwestern tried to. A hundred percent, because they would have sat down with the union leaders. They would have negotiated a deal. There would have been no. No waivers needed. There would have been. You are the labor. We are the 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 job provider. And 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 this is how this is what we all agreed to. Yes, we all agreed to this. Anybody who wants to opt out can opt out. Yes, they can opt out. If you opt in, you're in. No calls. Right. Yeah. We're good. And and that would be different because that is an organization that each player would give authority to speak for them and vote for them on their behalf. We yeah. don't have that here. Thank you, NCAA, for stopping that all these years because you never thought this would happen. Um, Levi Hamilton jumps in and said, what are the uh, specifics of the opt-out provisions? Do the players who continue to play sign waivers? Well, the opt-outs uh, are basically you can opt out and still keep your scholarship. They yep. don't know about the eligibility portion of it. and they I mean, they don't know about the eligibility for the – Big Ten kids that aren't getting a season this year. So, I mean, it, who knows? The eligibility right? would only really hurt, like, fifth-year starters, fifth-year seniors, right? Maybe. Because everybody you know? else could claim this as a, as a redshirt year. Yeah, and anybody that is a redshirt senior. So, so eligibility yeah. is only affected if you're a, if you're a senior who's are a redshirt senior. That's well, it. the other side is, like, if you're a, a junior, like, are you going to get two years? Now, well, or, that, that, you know. yeah, if if you haven't burned a red shirt, then you can always use the red shirt. Yeah, I mean, but, it's, yes, so that's that, the thing. That, those that's, are things that need to get worked out. That's pretty easy to work out, by the way. When the, in These, the NCAA, we're getting of course, stuck in in really small, simple things. Yeah, the NCAA it has not said a word about no, any of this. No, I mean, there's just, Mark Emmert's not going to do anything. Um, he said, "Do the players who continue to play sign waivers?" Uh, no, the NCAA does not allow that. They began that. Yeah, and Ohio State tried to get them to sign waivers, and the it, NCAA said no. Nope, it wasn't just Ohio can't. State. It was it was a lot of teams. A lot of teams were trying that, um, basically to to protect themselves from being sued over it. Yes, but yeah, some exactly of, what we're talking about. Yeah, some of the waivers included stuff about you know long term care over COVID and and all this kind of mess. And I mean, had they taken all that other crap out and basically were just like, you can't sue us, but we're going to take care of you, like. I think it might have been okay initially. I mean, at, at this point, who knows? Who knows? I mean, the whole thing's just ridiculous. Uh, Huey jumps in. He said, what's up? Finally get to watch a live show. There you go. That's what I'm talking oh about. Uh, so, yeah, this is all scary. Um, obviously, we want football. You know, uh, we may be limited to the NFL this year, but at this point, I mean, that, <laughs> who knows about any of this stuff? Like, it's so much easier with uh, – with baseball and what, but we do have hockey. I mean, hockey is right up on each other, and UFC is right up on each other. So I, you know, hell, I the NBA is right on each other. Yeah, I mean, they they all are. I, every every sport that's being played outside of really baseball and 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 golf, people are touching one another constantly. People are sweating on one another constantly. Yeah, no, you're right. You are right. Uh, let's move into.